Okay, so I, in, in this video, I want to talk about the sum of the geometric series. And here I have the sum of the powers of two, right? And I'm going to give you a formula for this. And, you know, as I'm doing so, I'm going to give you a formula for any geometric series, which is actually kind of interesting. So a geometric series, let's talk about the definition. So it starts with any value. One is nice, to be honest, you know, initial value of one is, is a nice value. And then every subsequent term is multiplied by the same value. In this case, it's one half. And we take all these terms and we add them together. So that's a definition of a geometric series. You can say it a different way, but at the end of the day, that's what it is. And so it's kind of, I think it's actually kind of interesting to, you know, see where the, the formula for geometric series comes from, right? So, I, yeah, I definitely, I'm going to start writing here. And I'm going to start with this, you know, so I'm going to start with this powers of, you know, two or powers of one half, however you want to talk about it. So I'm going to take S equals one plus one half plus one half squared plus one half cubed plus dot 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 plus one half to the n. Okay. And so I'm going to call this S sub n. So this is going to be not an infinite sum like what, what I was, what's written above. This is actually a finite sum of, you know, the first n powers of two, right? One divided by them, obviously. And, you know, want to investigate what the sum is. And, you know, right away you can say, wow, this can be kind of difficult to add everything up together. I mean, I, I would agree. You know, it's definitely not going to be too much fun. It doesn't look like fun. It's not going to be fun. But there's an interesting little trick here that we can do, right? We can multiply S of N by one half. So let's take a look at one half S of N. And so if you multiply, you know, this finite sum, the nth sum, you know, that's why it's called S of N. S is for sum, N is, you know, up to the nth term, right? That's the index. And so essentially multiplying every term on the right hand side by one half is what I'm looking to do, right? I don't want to get rid of that, but essentially, so I'm going to multiply this by one half, this by one half, this by one half, et cetera, et cetera. So when you multiply one by one half, you get a half, but I'm just going to shift it over. I'm going to put it right here just for fun. It doesn't matter where I put it, right? And they multiply one half by one half, it's one fourth. So I'm going to put it, you know, or one over two square. I'm going to put it over here just for fun. You know, I can put it wherever I want. You can. And then the next one would be one over you know, two cubed, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, if you take this SN and multiply it by one half, what happens is essentially it shifts everything over by one unit. So you're going to have one over two to the N would be not the last term, but the next to last term. And then we're going to have one over two to the N plus first power. So it's interesting. Awesome. You know, and, and this is really good because I'm approaching the answer to the question I posed at the very beginning, right? The, to the geometric, I'm get, getting closer. It, it's looking good, right? Now, if you notice, these two equalities hold. Well, you can subtract the left-hand side, the left-hand sides from each other and the right-hand sides from each other. And the left-hand side, you know, SN minus one-half SN is beautiful. It's just one-half SN. It's simple. And the right-hand side is really beautiful because it turns out all the terms cancel out except for the first and the last. Voila, that's the magic. So we get is one minus, don't forget we're subtracting one over two to the n plus first power, which is really fabulous because this is what we call progress. Instead of adding up all this stuff, I actually have a nice closed form for what SN is, you know, the sum of the first n powers, or the first n powers of two, yeah. So this is really nice. This is really, really nice, what I would have to say. And here we want to find what, at first I want to find what SN is, but keep in mind, at the very beginning, I'm looking for an infinite sum here. And SN is a finite sum, so there's a little distinction, but we'll take care of that as well. 
And so multiplying both sides by two to evaluate SN, where the twos cancel, I get SN equals two minus, you know, one over two to the N. That's exactly what you have. Yay. So I can be all excited and say, I, I found SN, but that's not the answer to the question because I think the answer to the question is what happens when n goes to infinity, right? So essentially, if we take a limit as n goes to infinity on both sides, and I don't really have space, that's what we really are looking for. That's the sum of the infinites. That's the infinite sum, right? And so what we would say, this is gonna be equal to, well, the limit as n goes to infinity of two is just two, and this term goes to zero which is really nice. It just goes to zero. And so the sum at the very beginning that I posed was equal to two. So right here I could say equals two. And so that answers the question of this geometric series. What's the sum of this geometric series? Hooray! But realistically, you know, somebody could say, Jan, what if you have instead of one half as the factor, what if, you know, two thirds or one third or seven eighths or something else, right? Well, the fact is we do it in the same way. Everything that, you know, was just done, instead of using a half, we can use the letter A or better yet, the letter R for our factor, right? The ratio between the terms. That's why we call it R. And so let me actually now generalize. Whoops, sorry, everybody. Let me generalize the conclusion. Let me just scroll down. So let's take a look at a general sum. So a general sum, we'll call it S is equal to A sub zero, first term, plus A sub R, plus A R squared, plus A R cubed, plus dot, dot, dot. That's a three, it's cubed. Plus dot, 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 good. How do I find the sum? Well, again, infinite things are a little sophisticated. So first we're gonna examine a finite sum. S of n equals a zero plus a, oh, these are a zeros, my apologies, because I'm multiplying by r. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I'm multiplying by r, so I kinda need an a zero plus a zero r squared plus a zero r cubed plus dot 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 plus there has to be an n a zero r to the n so good this is a finite sum yeah infinite sums are a little sophisticated okay when i say little i mean they are sophisticated so we're going to examine finite sums get an understanding of the finite sum and then take the take our you know the next step to infinite from finite which makes sense exactly what we did last time right I'm gonna use the same trick that I used last time. Instead of SN, I'm gonna multiply, you know, both sides here by R. So, you know, I'm gonna erase that. Multiply both sides by R. And what happens, All right? Well, I'm gonna get R SN equals, again, I'm gonna stagger the terms so it's a little bit better. I'm gonna, not gonna be so good looking at the end because I don't have too much space, but what are you gonna do, right? Doing the best we can do with what we have. Um, plus a. It's beautiful because it's just multiplying by r. You just shift everything to the one, right? So it's beautiful. Plus a zero r to the n plus a zero r to the n plus one. The one half, but obviously it's much more general, right? We have any initial, you know, beginning with a sub zero, and you know the ratio can be anything. It's not a half. So you know we're not starting at one. We're not multiplying by a half for each term. This is obviously much more general. So we're going to subtract the left-hand sides and the right-hand sides from each other. So I get S sub n minus R S sub n, so we'll leave it there, equals what? Well, these terms all disappear just like they did previous. And I have A0 minus A sub 0 R to the n plus 1 power. Back to that, the S sub n on the left-hand side, you get 1 minus R equals a sub zero minus a sub zero times r to the n plus first power. Divide by one minus r and we're in business on both sides. One minus r and here is my solution for 
you know, this finite song. Hooray! Right? It doesn't look beautiful, but it's, it is beautiful. And it doesn't look as beautiful as the previous one. The, the previous one was a little bit easier. But this is much more powerful, so hence this is much better. Right? So this, I, I would definitely say this is beautiful because this is a true general result. You know, this actually gives you the sum of any finite geometric series, right? Any finite geometric series. And so now the obvious question is, hey, wait a minute, Jan, you know, the question was an infinite beginning. You're doing these finite things. What's, what's, what's the sum of the infinite? Well, we can do that too. So how do I, you know, how do I, you know, go from this finite sum with n terms to this infinite sum? Well, we're going to do exactly what we did last time. We're going to say let n limit is we're going to let n go to infinity on the left hand side of Sn, and so that's going to be an infinite sum. And on the same thing on the right hand side, let n go to infinity of a sub zero minus a sub zero r to the n plus one divided by one minus r. Hooray, now let's talk about this. So this is my infinite sum. And it's equal to this thing over on the right. And what's, you know, so what's going on, right? Well, what's interesting is when I have a sum, you know, if I don't have a sum, if it's like infinite or negative infinity or something like that, I don't think it's very interesting to talk about a sum, <laughs> right? So what's interesting is when we actually have a sum and this term is the only term with an n in it and the n is taken to a power. And if r happens to be, you know, a substantial number, I'm not gonna define substantial, but let's say it's two. And then there's, you know, two to the n as n goes infinity, it's gonna to go to infinity. So this is not really gonna quote unquote work out, right? It's not gonna give me a number, a sum. So when is this gonna work out? Well, this is gonna work out when this term that I just circle r to the n plus one gets closer and closer to zero. And that happens when r an absolute value is less than one. When r is less than one, what I just circled disappears. It goes to zero which is really awesome, actually. And so I can kind of scratch it all out, right? But as n goes to infinity, if, so I'll write that, if r is less than one, then the sum is going to be equal to a sub zero divided by one minus r. That is nice and simple. Hooray, all right? And if R is bigger than one, I, I think we just said it's, it's not going to be okay. It's not going to work out, right? And if R equals one, it's really not that interesting in absolute value. But what do I mean? Because you're taking a number like one, you're multiplying everything by one or negative one. It's just not interesting. You know, what do I mean? If, you know, one interesting, as interesting as I can make it, would be, you know, one plus, minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one. You know, this, you know, one minus one plus one minus one plus one. There's a reason I use this. There, there's actually something going on with this sum. It's actually a very interesting sum. Uh, quite an interesting sum. But this would be as interesting as I could get when R, the absolute value of R, is equal to one in absolute value, right? And in this case, obviously, it's negative one. Um, but it, you know, really, the the sum that I just defined oscillates between one and zero. <laughs> and so it's not quite so interesting. So you know, formally, we're not going to say that it approaches anything because there, there's an exact definition of you know, convergence in math. And convergence would mean it, it, it gets closer and closer to a unique number, right? And this does not. Um, but therein, this is still an interesting sum, is what I would honestly say. I, I think this is an interesting sum. It comes up in the future, right? I'll, I'll actually make a video about that sum in the future in some context with, with quite interesting outcomes, you know? Um, that's pretty much it for today. So in short, we found a geometric 
sum, a geometric series, a sum of geometric series, this one here is two. And using the same technique that was used there, we were able to find a general form for any geometric series. And that you know, closed form is given here as your initial term divided by one minus the ratio of one term to the next, assuming that the absolute value of r is less than one, right? And if it's not less than one, I kind of gave a little bit of a hint that it's not a good thing. <laughs> I don't want to say anything too formal. You know, this is like, a, you know, recreational kind of video. It's not like a formal math video. So if I was teaching, you know, like high level math, I would use different language, but I like the language I'm using for the environment that I'm using it in. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll see you. Bye.